So guys, today we are going to be doing Would You Rather or Really Like More AFL Edition. So first, oh, I can put this here. Just don't touch it. Why? I'm just gonna let it go. So I will touch it. No, why? We're not touching this. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather first Luke Bruce? Or Anthony McDonald tip and Woody. That is a hard one. Because they're both pretty lovable players. Who would you say? I'm going to wait till you go first. I'm going to actually... I think this is a bit surprising, but I think I'll actually go tip and Woody. Yeah, I've got Tipper as well. He's, Tipper's full of unexpected things. Yeah, he Luke just, Bruce, he does like the same old, same old. Yeah, he just goes... He just gets the ball, runs around, and just kicks it. Um, so first, next we are doing, um, Nick Hind or Adam Saad? Well, this is actually pretty hard for me. Um, um, I've got mine. Well, I've got mine. There you go. Okay. Three, two, one. Nick Hind. Okay, Nick Hind. Yes. <gasps> okay, my turn. But I'm, not, I'm going Nick Hine, only because he has more energy than Saad. He had he puts on better, be, just a plain old better performance. Yeah. Um. So my next, next, I know. Do the next one. I know the next one. In my, it's in my head right now, and it's gonna be a special edition, retired players edition. Okay. So. Luke. Hodge or oh. Nick Rewalt? I'm gonna go Rewalt. I'm gonna go Hodge. Hodgey. Just say the reason. Because Hodgey, no, this is what I like about Hodge. So, um, he is a he mainly plays in the back line, but and he does really good back there. Except when the forward line line needs him to kick goals, he pushes up, and in a grand final, he kicked. He kicked a goal from the boundary out of nowhere. Yeah. So that's why I chose. I'm going Nick Rewell because he has more experience, way more courage. Uh, you saw that courageous mark against Sydney where he came back with the flight and almost yeah. back foot. Yeah. And um, better at kicking goals. True. That's just a okay. opinion. You're, yeah. You go next. Okay. Next one is... <clears throat> oh, Ruckman. Um... Oh god, I can't say it. Sam Draper, Draper, or Tim English. Oh. Well, th this year I know Tim English has done more for more. Yeah, for but squad. then then you got to think about it. Sam Draper has less experience, and he's played less games, and he's still and one of the best players. Yeah, he's I'm, I'm going player. Draper. Me too, Draper. He doesn't have much experience, but what he does in the rock is brilliant. He did better than Tim English. Yeah, like on the way. Yeah, Josh. Okay, so I'm gonna go. Um, let's see. Retired forward line players. Ooh. So here's a forward line player. One. Oh, can you help me with the second one? So first, Paul Pawlopolo. Oh. And Ooh. what's the next one? Um, because I don't know really anymore. Oh, that's hard. I gotta think of one. Oh, jeez. Choose one from Essendon. No, Do you know more players about I Essendon? Any. I know. I know. Um, a lot of players from back in the nineteen seventies. From all. Dunstall, for Essendon. Hey, not yet. <laughs> Oh, you want to do Jason Dunstall? No. First, this one. Paul Pawlopolo. Hmm. Yeah. Or should we do a team battle? Yeah. Uh, Paul Pawlopolo and... McVeigh. Nah, hold on, let me look. What about McVeigh? Or is he a midfield or something? I don't know. 2020 retired players and the listings. Here's what I found. Thank you. 
Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Seve. That, that, that's 2021. You idiot. You dumb animal. You dumb. You dumb, you need to get a new brain. Patton, Jonathan Patton, Jonathan Patton. That's just still a team battle, pretty much. Patton played a year or two, and then retired. Wait, who's the real one? one? Patton and Peter. I'm gonna go um, Poppy. Well, Buffalo. Poppy, because he just puts on a better show. Way every, better every show. Every time he's on the field, you, you just get the feeling he's just gonna have a brilliant game, you know? Okay. Yeah. Hey, right, now we're going for Essendon players. Retired players? No, just Essendon in general. So, uh, you do one and I do one. I have one of my own. Kale Hooker and Jake Stringer. Wait, okay. That would be a good one. Yeah, see, it depends. Stringer's got a lot more, like, experience. No, oh, no. Hooker's bloody 32. How old is Stringer? 27. Well... Um, Hooker's got a lot of experience. More experience than more Stringer. More experience. Stringer's got more, like, energy. But Hooker's just stronger in the contest. Gets up forward, kicks some goals. Like, for a person that's in the forward line, for the first, like, since maybe 2018, maybe? For who? Wait, which one? No, 2019, that? Cal Hooker. Yeah. He hasn't been in the forward line since then. For a player who kicks 32 goals, he's done pretty well at forward. So I'm going to go Cal Hooker. Hmm. Well, this is actually a pretty hard one. Um, if you go either way here, because Ron Stringer, he, he loads in the package every time the team needs it. Yeah. And But Cooker, he just kicks all the goals. I'm going to go oh, Kale Hooker. Oh, I was thinking hey, about that one. Go. Okay, let's see. Oh, I have one. These players played in 1970 for Morks. Um, okay, so Jason Dunstall and Dermot Brennan. Oh, that, Jason Dunstall, Dermot Brennan, that's hard. They both were legends back in the day. Oh, no. I know my choice. I'm going to go with Dunstall. Dunstall as well. Who's Dunstall? He, he's kicked over a thousand goals. He, he's yeah. played over a hundred games, or two hundred, maybe. Three hundred. <laughs> yeah, like most players get over one hundred. Yeah. Some of them just if they suck early on with like a fifty player AM. Alright, so Dunstall. Hey, this is a t really tough one. But these players are two really good players they're pretty old sean burgoyne or david mundy oh uh, that's a hard one mundy's in very good form at the minute and um i'm going mundy well if i would i would go with burgoyne because of how i mean is it just for this year or just the whole career in general I mean, you're doing retired players, so, so obviously they haven't played this year. No, Bergwijn and he's playing this year. Yeah, but he's not retired. I said retired. Oh, well, he has. Um, well, is it like from their whole career? Or, or do you want it to be? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Well, I would go Monday for this year. But I will go Bergwijn for the whole career. But that's one because he um is um he's just when he played for Port Adelaide, it was like he um had was you saying bold. He was he just could get it and run it and just run into goal. When once he came on the tall ball, he started to get he started like slowing down, getting older. Moving on. So okay, so. <sighs> Matt Rao oh. and Oh god, I feel like I know who you're going for. Sam Walsh, yeah. Oh, I knew it! I feel like that's a um pretty I'm going Sam Walsh. Sam Walsh as well. Sam Walsh is just playing. I I love I would love Matty Rao, but what Sam Walsh has done for the club, aka Carlton. 
this year Just is incredible. Astonishing. Yeah. He's almost played. He's played better than Patrick Cripps in my eyes. Okay. Hey. I do like this is gonna be a captain crash. Justin Heppel and Patrick Cripps. Nah. Scott Pendlebury. Scott Pendlebury. Okay. Um. This is a. Oh, this is tough. This is a pretty good one. Um, I'm gonna have to go with um, Pendles. I'm gonna have to go for Heppel. One reason is because um, over the years they've both been captain. They've just brought um, Heppel sport his club a heart um, a bit further, especially this year. Wait, when did Pendles become captain? Pendles became captain in like 2016 or something. Yeah. 1880, so maybe 20. Well, I don't know, because yeah, if, like if it was like in 20, 2009, which probably wouldn't really be like so young, and he probably won't be. You know what? I'm going Pendles, only because he has so much time, more experience, and what he does with the footy is incredible. Like, he keeps it straight to, um, I mean, sorry. Yeah, I would go Pendlebury, but Heppel, just what he does, he's just, he likes help, helping his teammates, he just gets the kick at, to the person, and then the, uh, yeah. the player just revives I, and gets the goal. This is a good battle, but Marcus Bontempelli or Darcy Parrish? And I'm talking this year. Oh, that's a very hard one. That's the hardest one we've had all day. They sure. both, they both had. And this is the la second last one. Yeah, I haven't gonna do the last one because I have a good one in mind. Um, so I'm going Darcy. Yeah, me too. Darcy Rose. Yeah. I love Bond. Like I actually really enjoy watching Bond. I would choose Bond. Yeah. What he, what Parrish has brought to his club this year is incredible. I like, mean, it is amazing I how mean, much he's done. Parrish. Um, one. Thing that I chose Parish over to Heppel, of uh, not Heppel, yeah, Bonton Pally. <laughs> Bonton Pally. Um, one, Bolton Pally hasn't been the most accurate he could be. He could be way more accurate if he just put some training into that. But Parish, even though he doesn't get too much training as a midfielder in the goal kicking section, as M much midfielder in the goal kicking, <laughs> you as a kick, um, as midfielder doing some goal kicking, he, he's just like been fifty. He's been a, he's been the most ac we're re one of the accurate most accurate plays I've seen this year, especially for not getting too much shade. And my last one, I have a treat for you. I don't like that. So I'm thinking of the second one. I have the first one. The first one, Eddie Betts. Oh no, Eddie Betsy, and Tom Hawkins. Mm. I mean, oh, that's a pretty good fight, don't you Eddie? think? Pardon? Eddie. That's Eddie, yeah. Eddie. One. Eddie every day of the week. He kicks goals one-handed from the boundary. Like, of course and, I'm going and in. And Hawkins, sometimes he can't even kick goal just directly in front. No, that's really more Tom Rich. Uh, well, uh, yeah, guys. We'll, we'll see you guys in the next awesome video. Peace.